and I'm glad to say he's back with us now. Uh, Richard, uh, how do you see the situation now in the Arab world after President Putin's, rather I was there, uh, so I can tell you with no exaggeration that uh, Putin took the, uh, the Gulf by storm. How, what impact is that having in the rest of the Arab world? Hi, George. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'll, I'll just start out by saying that um, uh, when uh, Putin visited uh, Saudi Arabia, they, they posted a six-minute video um, of him being greeted by mm. um, uh, MBS and other officials, which was kind of a... Uh, how should I put this politely? Well, it was... Um, <laughs> Uh, a rude gesture pointed at the uh, aimed at the Americans in a, in a in a sense telling them that look we have other options in case you're going to fumble this with uh, uh, what you're doing uh, with Israel um, with this uh, plan for a new Middle East um, and and of course you know earlier in the year when when uh, Saudi Arabia uh, uh, UAE uh, Egypt they they joined BRICS they also kind of sent that message as well um uh, the thing is that when 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 putin is is making these snap visits to the middle east uh this is you know it's also uh, uh, the act in and of itself is a message to the rest of the world is that you know uh, as long as america is going to get bogged down in wars in ukraine um and dragging the rest of europe uh, with it into into supporting ukraine and then also israel uh the, the rest of the world is still going to try and and move on without them um, you know, obviously, it would be nice to see uh, more support from the Chinese and the Russians uh, when it comes to Palestine. But, uh, you know, th th this is uh, uh, obviously a, a different conversation because were they to get involved, they would uh, have a confrontation with the Americans and they're already trying to deal with the Cold War and, and Ukraine. Uh, but, um, you know, it, the funny thing is that uh, when the Ukraine war started, um, they, they tried to vilify the Russians and sanction them. And we're seeing now, after a year and a half, almost two years, um, that th this campaign has failed. Uh, the sanctions against Russia backfired. Uh, their attempts to uh, you know, uh, put an arrest warrant out on, on Putin um, didn't amount to anything. So he's still able to travel freely. And we saw that when he was actually you know, on his way there in the presidential jet, uh, they jammed the USS um, Eisenhower um, uh, for and it was, it was uh, rendered uh, basically immobile um, and was irreparable for an entire day. Uh, so you know, Putin is going to travel wherever he wants, whenever he wants, and he's not going to be bogged down um, uh, by uh, you know attempts by uh, the United States, who again I should add is not an ICC member but loves messing with the ICC to put out warrants on people it doesn't like. Um, so he, he's not bogged down by that. And uh, I, I would add also that um, the head of the delegation, the Ukrainian delegation who went to Istanbul to hash out peace talks with uh, the Russians, uh, confirmed uh, what Putin um, had, had said a few months ago when he held up the draft uh, peace agreement with Ukraine, uh, that yes, Russia had offered peace. Uh, the, the only condition was neutrality, uh, that, that uh, Ukraine will forego uh, NATO membership. And Boris Johnson, um, uh, you know, our beloved former prime minister went down there and told the Ukrainians personally not to sign anything with the Russians and to keep fighting uh, against them and that NATO would have their back. And we see now that this was not true. Uh, once again, uh, you, you know, this is the, the curse of uh, uh, blindly trusting the United States. You end up stabbed in the back. Many have made this mistake in the past. Uh, the Kurds, for example, um, uh, got stabbed in the back by the Americans, uh, even Saddam Hussein. Uh, so, you know, it's a very long list. Um, and Ukraine now is is not even in the news anymore. And they're slowly winding people down, um, saying that, well, you know, it's not winnable. Uh, and, it, and it isn't winnable, but we knew this from the start. And they could have found a diplomatic settlement, a diplomatic solution in the beginning. Uh, but unfortunately, they, they let it go to this. And Ukraine is now one third of Ukraine's territory has been mined, uh, which is very tragic. Um, you know, all these people that have been killed from the Russian side, from the Ukrainian side uh, for this needless war. Um, but you know, NATO are done making their money, and so now they've moved on to Israel, where they're they're now sending them, um, uh, you know, ten thousand tons of gear uh, in the last two months, uh, over a hundred bunker buster bombs, uh, fourteen billion dollars. This is a, a, another you know money laundering um, a cycle, uh, basically money changing hands from uh, you know the taxpayer uh, into the uh, arms manufacturers. Um, but uh, Russia, China, Iran and the Global South, their standing on the world stage has improved as a result. Uh, so we're seeing a decline of the West um, and people like Putin and Xi Jinping and uh, Raisi 
and uh, Bashar al-Assad, all these leaders that they've tried to malign uh, are just moving on without the West. Uh, and that's uh, something that people are going to have to get used to, um, that you know, we, have, we have a choice now. We can either cooperate with the rest of the world and behave normally in the international community or continue doing what people in Washington say. Some things uh, surprise one, uh, even at my age. Uh, and one of those is how badly uh, Israeli propaganda is put together, uh, littered with quickly and easily provable uh, falsehoods, mistakes, right. lies, uh, and, and how little traction it has in the world, despite being supported by all Western governments, and virtually all, if not entirely all, uh, the uh, mainstream media in all Western countries. Are you surprised at how badly uh, Israel has, um, ha has created this propaganda? Or is what they're doing just so horrific that no amount of artistry uh, can turn it into a pretty picture? Yeah, th those are both very good points, George. Um, the the thing is that you know the United States send Israel billions of dollars every year, and and I'm kind of shocked how they they still manage to make the worst propaganda on earth. It's it's, I mean they, I, either they they are really incompetent or they they just uh, think that everyone in the West is really stupid that they're just going to buy this, uh, uh, you know, and, and blindly believe it. And the latest one. Was was this uh, episode where they basically kidnapped um, uh, men in Gaza, including uh, journalists? They stripped them, blindfolded them. Uh, they kept them in the cold all night, then released some of them. And uh, you know, because people got outraged, um, and and some stations, uh, some journalists asked them about it. They then claimed they're Hamas fighters. Well, uh, you know, they they're not Hamas fighters because you don't fight naked. And and we the Israelis released videos of these uh, so-called Hamas fighters surrendering their assault rifles, their AK-47s, in their underwear. Um, so, you know, t this idea that, that um, they, they would fight naked, I, I just don't buy this. It's, it's uh, preposterous. Um, uh, and also, well, you know, we know that the Israelis um, uh, have lied about a lot of things. You know, they keep telling us that things are happening, but they don't provide any evidence. I mean, uh, they say, for example, that, um, uh, you know, again, I don't want to go into their whole list of things, but the beheaded babies, for example, was one of the biggest claims. And, and yet they don't provide any evidence. Um, and uh, the rapes, no evidence. Uh, e even on college campuses in the US, they, they make claims that Palestinian activists or pro-Palestine uh, people are saying things like gas to Jews. Well, I mean, if, if they would provide us evidence with this, I think you and I would be the first people to condemn that, but they don't provide any evidence. And so what they're really trying to do is to smear the Palestinian resistance, uh, to smear uh, uh, college students, um, uh, you know, university campuses where, where some protesting against Israel is allowed. Uh, and and shut that uh, entire conversation down and and you know allow no room for dissent. And so it really really is preposterous and, and terrible propaganda. Um, and the thing with the list in the hospital at, at Al Shifa Hospital, I mean, they just thought that because something is written in Arabic and the Israelis pointing at it and saying, you know, this is a list of of, of hostage nannies, that people are going to blindly believe that, which I think says a lot about the the level of Islamophobia that's that's been you know that's been. Uh, um, that's fermented in the West over the years with Iraq and, and with Syria and Afghanistan and so on, that, that you know, you can say anything about um, Arabs and Muslims and people will just eat it up. Well, unfortunately for them, uh, you know, people on the internet are not um, uh, just going to blindly believe what Israel says and, and they, you know, rightfully called that out. It was actually just the days of the week written in Arabic. Uh, so, yeah, it, it really is terrible propaganda. Um, and I don't know why they, it, it, it's like it just gets gradually worse and worse. I will say something, though, that when it comes to the claims the Israelis make, it seems like everything they say about Palestinians um, uh, having allegedly done is, is a confession. Uh, you know, this thing about burned babies, ironically, it's, uh, it's the Israelis that threw uh, Palestinian babies in the oven. There's at least one occasion of this um, uh, where an eyewitness saw both the baby and the father being thrown into an oven by Israelis. Um, you know, the, the rapes, we've seen uh, 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 children, uh, men, women, all suffering sexual assault and abuse in the prisons. Some of the hostages released uh, in the last weeks confirmed this, uh, that they were subjected to these horrific things. Uh, whereas you look at how uh, Israeli hostages are treated by uh, Hamas, you know, they're treated humanely, normally. Um, there's no deranged behavior directed at them. So uh, every, every Israeli uh, accusation is really just a confession and an admission of guilt. Even their general staff, uh, Mr. Mark Regev, for example, uh, the Australian settler, 
who has become an indispensable voice for Netanyahu, yeah. former ambassador uh, in London, uh, he, he went on television. And when asked by the journalist why they had stripped all these men naked and put them on public display, a la Abu Ghraib, uh, right. for example, he actually said on television it was hot, so we stripped them down. Incredible. The, the fact that it was 15 degrees, 1-5 degrees, and therefore not hot but cold, why right. would you strip a huge number of men, photograph yourself doing it, and expect that not to look ugly? And that's Regev, one of the best yeah. of the propagandists. What do you make of that? <laughs> yeah, George, this is really... Um... Uh, it, it, the Israelis really shown their true colors uh, because um, uh, the, this thing that oh the weather is warm, uh, as you said, no, no, it's absolutely not. And and let's say let, let's assume let's play devil's advocate literally for a second and say that it was warm. Uh, that doesn't give you the right to strip the prisoners and photograph them naked. Uh, you know, one of the war crimes committed in the Ukraine war was that uh, POWs were being filmed. So. Uh, even if these men were really Hamas fighters, and even if it was, you know, it was, uh, uh, it was so so hot, you can't strip them and then photograph them and film them and publish this. It's a war crime. Uh, period. Uh, I know. In I know that in Israel, international law translates to toilet paper. But nevertheless, you know, they should make some tiny effort uh, because what they're really doing is they incriminate themselves. Really, um, we shouldn't expect anything less. But they, they incriminate themselves. Um, and uh, you know. Article Article 13 of the Geneva Convention is, is precisely um, uh, the article that, that stipulates you cannot subject people to uh, degrading um, uh, treatment or humiliation. And you mentioned Abu Ghraib, and I think this is a very sensible and appropriate um, uh, comparison because uh, the treatment, uh, it, it looks identical. You know, you've got these uh, Arab men that are being stripped down, uh, you know, subjected to humiliation, blindfolded, abused, and then photographed. Um, by their captors. And we, we saw the Americans doing this in Abu Ghraib, um, the Israelis doing it now in Gaza, and of course ISIS, uh, who were created by the United States um, and, and working alongside Israel and the United States, doing that to Syrian soldiers as well when they massacred them. So I, I don't think that's a coincidence. I, I think this, this form of torture and humiliation, that, that it's done in the exact same manner, it's filmed, it's published, um, it, it's not a coincidence. It, it is happening in the same region by the same people who, you know, it really just comes down to, to European colonizers, essentially, whether we're talking about the Israelis or Americans or Europeans. It's the same powers uh, uh, that, are, that are doing this. And, and you know, we, we should just, uh, uh, you know, call it out for what it is. It's, uh, it's, it, it's not just crimes, uh, war crimes, they're crimes against humanity because it's an affront on the entire country, on the entire peoples, uh, you know, uh, on their civilians and also on their armed forces. And uh, it's always American Zionists behind this. Um, and I don't know what it is, if they, they, they get a kick out of it or something, but uh, it really is not a coincidence. And what they're doing is just showing their true colors. What, what astounds me is that uh, every single day we see more and more atrocities uh, like this humiliation and torture coming out, and people in the West don't wake up. What is it going to take for people to wake up? I, I ask the, myself this question every single day. Is there a threshold um, of, of people that have to die or, or you know, uh, uh, crimes that have to be filmed on camera uh, and documented? Because every single one of them, almost every single one is, uh, that, that we have to reach before people wake up. What's it going to take? Well, uh, Richard, the whole point about the metaphor of the straw that broke the camel's back is that you never know what the last straw is going to be. If you did, you wouldn't put it on the camel's back. But the camel's back breaks, and one day this will break too. Richard Medhurst, as always, thank you for joining us on the mother of Thank you, all talk shows.